Hey there, planner friend. So in today's video, I'm going to go through just a few planning supplies that I bought early on in my planning journey that I'm now just like, why did I buy that? <laughs> um, it seemed like a, such a great idea. Initially, perhaps I was jumping on a trend but now I've got further along my journey I'm kind of like not really seeing the point of it or not making full use of it so let's get to it. The first supply that I'm questioning why did I buy that? Transparent sticky notes. I kind of went hard for the transparent stickies. I've got uh, page tabs, which, you know, they are quite useful. I've got different size, plain transparent sticky notes, and then I've got some colored st uh, transparent sticky notes along with some shape colors as well. And I mean, this little selection by Plan By Sto, it is absolutely stunning. And I spent such a long time going through her lineup of different stickies to find uh, a color combination that I thought was going to work really well together. And I do find this aesthetically pleasing, but I just don't use it. The truth be told, I just don't use it. And the reason being is because, well, the main reason is because I can't just grab my, sharp, my uh, not Sharpie, my Tombow and write on it. And I can't just grab my gel pen and write on it. Because it's made of plastic, I need to use either an oil-based pen that I was just having trouble finding one here in the UK and I was being kind of impatient um, or a marker pen, which I did get a marker pen, but it was an extra pen that I would have to carry either with my planner. I ended up carrying it in my pencil case, but I've since discovered that it's not in my pencil case. So it's just the inconvenience of having to have that extra pen somewhere to hand when all you want to do is just grab a sticky and quickly note something down it just didn't seem very practical i will still use up these transparent sticky notes because they are go gorgeous i will find a use for them but they probably won't be kept in my planner as something that i reach to i'll probably keep these with my additional planning supplies that i use when i'm sitting down to do uh, like a start of the week intensive plan out or a start of the month intensive plan out. Another reason why I'm not a huge fan of these transparent sticky notes is because you can't really see what you're doing when you've written on them and then you stick them in your planner. It just gets a little bit confusing. So that's another reason why I've fallen out of love with these transparent sticky notes. And then the final thing about these transparent sticky notes is I'm not sure how to safely dispose of them. Do I just toss them in the rubbish or can they be recycled? Because they're made of plastic can, and they are a PET plastic, can they just be recycled with normal plastics or do I have to do specialist soft plastics recycling? It just, it just didn't sit right with me. And, you know, I want to be mindful of the amount of uh, unnecessary plastic, shall we say, that I'm using. So I think um, as much as I absolutely adore these coloured ones and the different shapes, I'm probably not going to repurchase transparent sticky notes moving forward. I am going to switch to paper sticky notes just because I know where I'm at in terms of recycling these. These ones did say that you can recycle them so I'm going to assume that the adhesive that's used is safe to put in paper recycling. They're made from recycled paper as well and additionally these were I think I picked these up from a shop called Flying Tiger here in the UK and I think they were about 50p for a stack of 100, which compared to these high-end coloured versions and shaped versions, you know, I didn't always want to use these because they felt very um, precious, shall we say, very expensive and luxurious, and I didn't want to waste them for just doing some little scribble on them. So I will still use these somewhere within my planner setup, maybe for um, page tag that I want to highlight a certain page. Here I've used the round one just to highlight my inbox. But for on the go, two hand sticky notes, I'm gonna to switch to paper and I'm just gonna keep it up here 
in my planner pocket and I know that I can just grab my gel pen and write on it. If I've got a pencil to hand, I can still use it and I can even highlight things on that sticky note with my Tombow. So just seems a lot more practical. The next planner supplies that I'm just questioning, did I really need to buy that, is dividers. I really struggled with dividers for the longest time. I found these dividers on Sort Stuff Out, her Etsy shop, and I decided to go with the five tabbed dividers because I thought that would lend itself quite well to the sections. But I never ended up really labeling them because I was so unsure about what or how I should section up my planner and how I should label them. Then I decided to try having um, just four sections within my planner. So I created my own tabs for the four sections. I decided to call them chapter one, two, three, and four, and switched to having just a contents page because I figured that if I just have a con one page for my contents, if I change my mind in terms of how I've got these different sections set up, I can always just rename it and print out just one sheet rather than having to get whole new dividers or get new sticky labels to stick on the divider tabs. But then I just got to a point because it was adding a lot of bulk, I had this planner section with the tab and then I had some artistic deco and uh, other that like I think there were vellums and things in here. It just begin, began to bulk up my planner. So I've decided to get rid of all of the planner sections, all of these um, decorative dashboards and layering vellum because in between each of the sections in both of these setups with the plastic five tabbed dividers and these full tab dividers, I had a lot of dashboards and other decorative items that I never really saw because I was never coming to the start of that section and flipping through each of those um, layering moments, if you will. So in this setup that I've done in my molding, I've decided to switch to just a uh, today, this week, and this month tabs because I just want to simplify and streamline the whole setup. I have got some decorative items. So I've got a vellum here. I've got a bit of a layering moment, but these are both for practical uses. I've got this month's calendar and then it's just layered over my 2022 calendar where I can see the year at a glance. And then the next layering moments was where I had my 2023 calendar. So, um, but again, I'm using that for a practical purpose. I'm storing my sticky notes for 2023 future dates. And then I've got one final part where I just have this single vellum and photographic dashboard, which serves absolutely no purpose other than to be a little bit of uh, an inspirational moment. And hopefully I should see this because I'm going to keep this near to my inbox section. So there will be a high chance that I will see this. It's just before my today section as well. So again, there is a high chance that I'm actually gonna see this and be inspired by it. Additionally, by getting rid of all of those sections and all of those layering stories, I have reduced the amount of bulk in my planner. That's not to say that things won't come back, they certainly will because this is maybe too streamlined. But in terms of clearing out the clutter and having absolute clarity around my planning requirements, this has definitely been a, like the next level for me. So again, why did I buy dividers? Why did I create lots of dashboards and things like this? I was kind of just jumping on a trend in terms of the dashboards. And then with the dividers, it seemed like a good idea, but I just couldn't make it work for me in a way that felt logical and comfortable. So at the moment, this is what makes my heart sing. And then the last thing that I'm like, why did I buy that? <laughs> And that is task cards. They seemed like such a great idea when I saw um, different planner friends on YouTube sharing their task cards, showing them off, showing how they've lab labelled them up and whatnot. And I spotted these ones on 
sort stuff out on Etsy. And I thought that they were such a brilliant idea because you've got the three tabs, so it lends itself to being daily, weekly and monthly tasks. But I just couldn't get on board with it. At first, I used one of my um, transparent sticky notes and then just cut it to size to fit on the tab and just hand wrote some of my trigger list for tasks but I just felt it looked kind of messy then because I wasn't using the um, plastic dividers that I had got and used in this planner but I had bought a pack of her divider label so this is uh, sort stuff out clear frosted plastic dividers i bought her divider labels as well and they became redundant so i thought oh well let me try them out on my task cards and yes i do prefer how it looks but i'm just not reaching for these even though they are here up the front in my planner they are there as soon as i open it up they are to hand on a daily weekly and monthly basis I'm just not coming to them so I think I may just switch to maybe again going back to some sort of sticky note and just sticking them onto these page markers with uh, the today this week and this month page markers that I got from Colour Cafe and just putting a trigger list on there just a handwritten basic one and seeing if that helps but I just feel like I don't I'm not using it properly or I haven't found my flow when it comes to uh, task cards. So maybe a trigger list is the way to go. I'm not sure. So planner friends, comment below. Have you also fallen out of love with your transparent sticky notes? Are you using them in a different way? Are they one of your um, planning supplies that you reach for when you're doing an intensive weekly or a start of the week, start of the month planning session? Have you switched for paper sticky notes for a kind of on the go solution within your planner? Or have you just ditched sticky notes altogether? And how about the planner sections? How are you feeling with your planner sections? Have you got lots of layering moments happening at each planner section? Have you ditched having tabbed dividers? Are you just using simple sticky tabs to highlight a few key places that you need to quickly flip through but have stripped everything back to basics? What are you guys doing? And then finally, the task cards. How are you guys using task cards? Are you winning with these? Do you actually refer to your task cards and use them in the way that they are intended? Or are you also feeling like you're just not reaching for them consistently enough to warrant it having a special place within your planner setup? Let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, I shall see you over here in the next video. Bye for now.